Welcome everyone to another lesson in the motion series, this one on momentum. This is the first lesson we're doing on momentum. So it's not going to be, be very complicated. Uh, all we're going to be doing is finding the momentum of a particular object. Later in the momentum series of videos, or in the motion series on uh, momentum, we'll be looking at collisions between objects. But in this lesson, there'll be no collisions. It's just about finding the momentum of an object. I have three boxes, uh, boxes pictured below. We're going to find the momentum for each of them. Now we'll find the momentum for the first two and the third one we're going to find the velocity. So for this first box, the mass is two kilograms. It's moving at a speed of six meters a second that way. And we'll ask ourselves, what is the momentum? Momentum being given by symbol P. If momentum is mass times velocity, then the, the momentum here is equal to 2 times 6, which is 12. And the units are kilograms times meters per second. The second box has mass 3 kilograms, and it's moving at a speed of 5 meters a second to the left. Let's figure out the momentum. So this brings us to an important point. Momentum, like velocity and like acceleration, is a vector. It has direction and it can be negative. Since from this answer here, uh, we've, said the, we've seen the momentum of this box is positive, you can assume we're working with, with to the right as the positive direction. But this box is moving to the left. So even though it has a speed of 5 meters per second, the velocity of this box here is equal to negative 5 meters per second because velocity is a vector and it can be negative. If the momentum is also a vector, that suggests to us that if the box is moving to the left, it'll have negative momentum. And that makes sense because when we do the sums, uh, P is equal to mv, mass is always positive, times velocity, negative 5, we get negative 15 kilograms times meters per second. So we have a negative momentum going on here. The third box, we don't know, oh, what was I going to do here? We don't know the velocity, so if the velocity is a mystery, but we do know the box weighs 10 kilograms and has a momentum of negative 45 kilograms times meters per second. Let's figure out the velocity of this box here. If momentum is equal to mass times velocity, then the momentum divided by the mass is equal to the velocity. And in this case, that's equal to 10, oops, sorry, four, negative 45, divided by 10, which is equal to negative 4.5. So we've come out with a negative velocity. That means that the box, like this box here, is moving to the left at a speed of 4.5 meters per second. So hopefully having seen those three examples, you'd be able to find if you're given the mass and the velocity of the momentum, or if you're given a combination of any two of mass, velocity, and momentum, finding the third one. Let's have a look now at change in momentum, which becomes very important later in the course. So change in momentum. And that's just equal to the final momentum, we'll say PF, take away PI. That's our first formula for it. So say we have a bungee jumper, shown here as a box, leaping down from a great height. And that's one instant in time. And then the second instant in time, they've actually reached the lowest point in their bounce and are now coming back up. 
So on the way down, they have a velocity of 20 meters per second downwards. So we'll take the downwards direction to be positive. The person also has a mass of 80 kilograms. On the way up, they have a velocity in the upwards direction. We'll say actually we'll say speed in the upwards direction of five meters per second and the mass hasn't changed. Let's figure out the change in momentum of this person uh, between these two moments in time. So the momentum in this picture here, P is equal to MV, that comes to 80 times 20, or 1600 kilograms times meters per second. So always work in meters per second and kilograms to find the right momentum. In this picture here, since we've taken velocity to be positive in the downwards direction, the velocity of the person in this picture is actually negative five meters per second. It's the opposite direction to this one. So the momentum in this picture here is equal to mv 80 times negative five or negative 400 kilograms times meters Per second. So now to find the change in momentum, delta P is equal to PF take PI. That would be negative 400 take away 1600, which is equal to negative 2000 kilograms times meters per second. If you'd said that the change in momentum was just equal to 2,000 kilograms times meters per second, 2,000. You'd be wrong because the change in momentum is supposed to tell you by how much it increases as you go forward in time. So if I had said the change in momentum was positive 2,000, that would be telling the examiner that I think it's going to go from 1,600 up to 3,600. But in fact, what we want to say is the change is negative 2,000 because it goes from 1,600 to negative 400. So always make sure the sign of delta P reflects the question you've set up uh, in the first part here. So we said, since that's the positive direction of our picture, the change is negative. Here is another formula for the change in momentum. So we've got delta P is equal to PF take PI which is equal to mass times the final velocity, take max, uh, mass times the initial velocity, which is equal to take mass out as a factor, VF take VI, which is equal to the mass times the change in velocity. So that's the one we want. Delta P is equal to M delta V, because M does not change, it's the V that's changing. So in this case here we can shortcut this question. If we did really want to find delta P, we'd say delta P is equal to the mass, that's 80, times the change in velocity, well that would be negative 5 here, take away 20 over here, which equals 80 times negative 25, which comes to Yep, negative 2,000 kilograms times meters per second. So you can use this formula if it helps you. So in the next two videos, we'll be looking at collisions in which you have to know the net momentum of a system, and then we'll be looking at impulse.